It was the last day of a pastor's retreat. When they had gathered, I had asked them to do an assignment, which was that they were to look through Scripture, through that three days, and find the name that belonged to them, or the story that they, that they couldn't live without. I had explained to them, Abraham Heschel talks about Scripture by saying that we do not say the Word. The Word utters us. There are pieces of Scripture that we belong to. So I'd asked them, that was their assignment, to prepare for the closing day when we would set up a circle of chairs, we'd put a chair in the middle, and we would hear each other pronounce our names, one of the two all who were there, identify the way the Word had uttered them. It was going, it was going very well. There were really powerful testimonies that were coming right out of the Scripture. Then a, a young one, a young, young man, for ministry anyway. He got up and he came and he sat in the chair and he didn't say anything. And, you know, we waited and we waited and then it got really uncomfortable and people were looking at their watch and a little nervous. And so finally I said to him, um, is there something you would like to share with us? Is there some name or some story? And he, you know, he didn't look at me, he didn't look at the group. He only, he only looked at his hands and he said, um, I, there are names I wanted. I looked for three days for my name. There are names I wanted. But none of them were strong enough to replace the name that I have, the name that I've been given. I was given this name when I was very young, and it was repeated to me as I grew. My father gave me this name. And then he fell silent again, and, and after a moment I said, would you be willing to share? Wh what is that name? What, what is your name? And he said, he said, my name is not good enough. That's my name. My father gave me that name. And, and, and then he began to cry. He just, and we were in that room, and we were watching him, and he was crying, and it was, it, it was like he was drowning right in front of us, and here we are, this whole room full of lifeguards, and, and we don't know what to do. Um, how could he not have a name, and, or how to break the power of that name? And, and then it was, I think the Spirit did its work, because it, it was like a... It was like a wind or, or maybe just an impulse. There, a group of us got up all at once. We got up without making eye contact and, w and went to where he was on the chair, sitting, weeping. And we, we laid hands on him. We laid hands on him. And then it wasn't just one voice. It was, it was several voices, like one voice coming up all together, like one flow, one stream. And what we said to him, sitting, weeping in our midst, with our hands on Him, was this. You are my beloved Son, in you I am well pleased. And then we just paused. We just let the blessing rest. And then we all sat down. When we packed up and finished our business and, and got ready to go home. I saw him in the parking lot and I went over and I said, I, I need to know, I really need to know. Will that make a difference to you? Will, that, will what happened make any difference? And he said, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know. But he said, I feel as if something in here was broken. And it isn't now. But, he said, I promise you, every time I put my hand in the water to help name another human being in front of God, I'll remember who I am. See, I think that's the secret of our baptism.